been I've been waiting. I was like, yes. <gasps> anyways, anyways, anyways. I don't know where we're at. Um, <laughs> Sorry, don't we have an assignment or something? We do have Buck an assignment. Ah, uh, god damn it! You are that fucking kid in class, Mike. Fuck. Well, I was trying to help Sorg with a segue. Did right. you give his apple <laughs> bell too, you little Professor ass? Professor Jacob Edwin has been on sabbatical this hey, month. Hey, we actually had a competent teacher this month. And so. and uh, <laughs> he's not a professor. <laughs> Substitute teacher. Yeah. But also actual teacher at the Iron City Wrestling Academy. Chris Steve, we have an actual teacher this time, Sword. Yeah, we, I, I, with credentials. I, I, I mm-hmm. will not discount that this one has credentials that, that um I was really surprised when Edwin said I don't have a degree. I earned I was it. not surprised because I had been saying that shit for months. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> educational for sure. But we did have a match assigned to us by Chris LaRusso, the heir apparent. Apparent to what I have never figured out, uh, but uh, uh, apparent to heirs. Apparent to heirs. Is that how yeah, that well, works? Well, no. It's 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 like it's like that old joke. When does a joke become a dad joke? When it becomes apparent. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> you know what's funny? When whenever we have four people on, I feel like we're doing um, like the up up down down crew. But I'm Cesaro bringing the terrible jokes. Yeah. But I have like literally the exact opposite of everything else that is Cesaro. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Even when it comes to amount of hair. <laughs> hey, hey. No, dude, he shaves his head. Trust me, he looks much better with a shaved head than I ever would. I realize that. I got a misshaped head. I know this. Yeah, I'm worried back. about what this is gonna look like. But um, anyways. What was I gonna do? The the batch that he, he assigned. Yeah was Triple H and Shawn Michaels from WWE Raw, December 29th, 2003. That we got this match, a a, a half-hour match. Like, listen, this literally happened. Mm-hmm. About the end of the, the, the relative work day here uh, at Sorgatron Media Studios, and the wife asks... Uh, I'm like, hey, I, I need to watch this match. I'm going to try to get it in before we uh, we head out here. I was like, oh, how long's the match? I'm like, it's a TV match. It's probably like 10 minutes, right? <laughs> no, no. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Um, Sorry, do his research beforehand. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, it's like the longest match we've ever done here. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and there you go. But it was a good match. Holy crap. It was very good. It was, it was a, good. It was a fantastic match. It was a Although uh, b- before I'm sorry, before we get there are two things that stick in my craw that I have to mention. Mm-hmm. One, it was sponsored by PlayStation 2. Oh, this that part. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, that's a, that's a throwback." Like if you watch the replays, most of the time they won't have a lot of the sponsors on there, mm-hmm. especially for like later Raws. But the PlayStation 2 really just kind of like, oh, oh, that's a while ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, that's that's a bit a bit ago. When, <laughs> when they're still numbering them and just came out with five, you're just like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. But, but um, the other thing, this is the era of the weird Triple H hair. Weird Triple H hair. Weird Triple H yeah, hair. Yeah, he where... had in between. He had like the in between hair. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, Badger, Badger knows what I'm talking. Because like when it was dry, when it was blown dry, he looked like Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> but in the middle of the match, I swear to God, half the time from the back, I thought it was Kenny Omega. <laughs> You're like, I don't remember Kenny, Kenny Omega o- being it was, on. It was Kenny Omega hair, and I'm like. All right, this is probably the closest we'll ever get to Shawn Michaels versus Kenny Omega. Mm. Probably, <laughs> probably the closest. Oh boy! Oh, but look boy. at his hair again in that match. Mm-hmm. It looks like Kenny Omega's after like forty-five minutes of a match with like Okada or something. <laughs> it, it's uh, it, it say it's a long match. We got Ric Flair out there. Um, um, we got Ric Flair out there uh, uh, doing Ric Flair things. Uh, it's a evolution era. Uh, uh, doing good Ric Flair things as opposed yes. to now. And the big and well, I want to talk more about the match itself, but just kind of placing where we're at. We end with a, an all shoulders down. Eric Bischoff replaces the referee, counts the counts the match amazingly, seemingly for Shawn Michaels, but actually 
it's a draw because of the four shoulders. And here comes the new sheriff in town. This is when we reveal, I believe, Stone Cold Steve Austin coming out where he's about to become the co-authority oh, figure on yeah. Monday Night Raw. And I very much appreciate a part of this era when they were either seeing both or trading off who, which of them was presenting a pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. So there would be, you know, there was the Raw pay-per-view and SmackDown. So for the Raw pay-per-views, you would get Eric Bischoff presents. He was starting to do that because he's yeah. being that guy. But eventually it became some of them would be Stone Cold Steve Austin presents, I don't know, mm -hmm. Judgment Day, whatever. Well, the, the next was. SmackDown, the next SmackDown only pay-per-view that would be after this Raw is when Eddie Guerrero won the WWE oh, title. Oh, man. Yeah, so so we're getting into some good stuff. But like um I think if I remember this raw correctly, this was when Eric Bischoff's job was in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So he was trying to be like he was trying to be on his best behavior all night. Yes. And he even apologized to Sean that he like he accurately counted the match. Like he like like to say that, you know, it was kind of like basically very similar to what they did with um Big E and Apollo Crews this week on SmackDown where, both, where all sets of shoulders were down. Mm -hmm. And you thought you had a new champion, but no, Ty goes to the champion. But they're also in San Antonio, which is Shawn Michaels' hometown. Holy hell. Oh, Holy that pop. hell. That pop. Because I, I couldn't place this match. I couldn't place it in my brain. I I'm got, like, I didn't remember it taking place. I got to say. But then Shawn won. I'm like. They, that doesn't track because I know he never became champion again after 2002. So I knew yeah. it was a dusty finish as soon as they hit that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, this is yeah. they're in his hometown. Oh, this is a dusty finish. How'd they pull this off? Right. And um, I, I was like, long ref, something like that. You know, I saw, you know, shoulders like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but still the ride to get there was fantastic. Oh yeah. It was great. Fantastic. Match. So, um, the, the back body drop Sean took over the turnbuckle to the floor. Mm. Yeah, that was <sighs> fucking insane. Um, I was, uh, uh, some notes early on with this, uh, hometown crowd evolution era. Um, there's a point early in the match where he's, he's on him and, and, and Triple H is in the ropes, right? And the ref says, says, back off, back off. And Sean's like, okay, sure. And then, like, goes and kicks the, you know, does a, does a quick, short kick to the ropes. Because uh, he's standing over the second rope, uh, the game and the nuts. Like, like there was still little, like, yeah, you know. And Sean, Sean also did a flare flop into Triple H's nuts too. <laughs> like Sean, oh. Sean did Sean, like Sean was he did the thing where I think he hit like a spine buster or something. Like he he took him down somewhat, and then Sean was so exhausted he he flopped forward, but it was head putting Triple H right in the nethers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is and, and I'm. It was a very good match. And, and seeing a full st a full arena with a hot crowd is just I don't know I I I think we appreciate it more than we would have. Um. So. Oh, well, it was also a really my train of thought crowd. was in the same place, George. Yeah, I was like, yeah. man, that crowd with like old school signs of just like the eight by ten with whatever. Listen, it was man. it was just like. I found my see myself longingly uh, watching a video from the Gathering of the Juggalos in a Cannibal Corpse mosh pit and saying, I remember when. <laughs> remember when. Also realizing I probably, I, you know, I probably wasn't up front for the Cannibal Corpse show like that, but I was probably not far away from that mosh pit. Uh, <laughs> that was in the video. <laughs> so. I don't know what would happen to my body now if I got into a mosh pit. We should just have an uh, uh, old old podcasters slash wrestlers that have seen some shit mosh pit and see what happens. <laughs> so, so this is how I officially die, huh? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. We actually we actually end it with everybody lining up on either side for a mm -hmm. wall of death. And it's then, like oh. Red Rover, Red Rover have death come right over. Hot, immediately take it to the hospital. When we did the <laughs> when we did the world's uh largest uh, uh battle royal, I really wish it was organized enough that we could do a wall wall, wall of death spot. Uh that would have been, I'm been thinking amazing. About it. You know, but uh, it's just that one there was enough room. Uh, so we needed a fourth ring. Uh so uh but uh but but that that happens. Next time. Next time. 
next time. We'll talk, we'll talk oh, that in the back pocket for ideas. Yeah. 